Hello everyone! The first video in the Coding Perseverance Rover series is here. In this video, we'll guide you through some basic coding and demonstrate how to run the code. Let's get started! First, you must take the USB cable you got with your kit and prepare your Windows, Mac or Linux computer. Connect the rover and go to code.circuitmess.com. If this is your first visit to the site, you'll need to create an account before proceeding. You can either use your email and create a password or just use your Google account. You can also find more detailed instructions on how to use circuit blocks in the caption. Let's begin by exploring the main menu. Here you will find the button for creating a new sketch and next to it you'll have access to your saved sketches in the future. Scrolling down you'll see different examples we have prepared for you. At the top of the site you'll see options to restore firmware and to log out. Let's click on the new sketch. In the device section, you can choose the device you are currently coding. Choose Perseverance Rover and write down Drive as the name of your sketch as that is what we'll be coding right now. You'll also see the section labeled Editor Type when you can choose between Visual and Code. Opting for the Visual option allows you to use colorful blocks, while choosing the Code option means that you will have to input the code manually just like the pros. We'll cover only the block coding part. Let's start! Once you open a new sketch, click on the connect button in the top right corner and select your device from the list. Since your device is still running the stock firmware, you will first need to install MicroPython onto it. Click on the more info button, located next to the message indicating that MicroPython is not installed. A window will appear with the option to install MicroPython onto your device. In this first example, we'll show you how to make your rover drive away from you, turn around and come back. Let's quickly go over the block sections we'll use in this example. The loops section will allow us to keep the code running indefinitely by using the loop forever block. The math section will allow us to set our variables to specific numerical values and to use different mathematical operations to adjust them later. The variables section will allow us to create and define variables, which we'll be using throughout the code. The I.O. section is used for different inputs and outputs. In this example, we'll use it for buttons and motors. Finally, the time section will allow us to add a time block at the end of our code, which will determine the amount of time that passes before the code runs again. Great, now let's start coding. First, let's create a variable and name it speed. This variable will determine the speed at which your rover will be moving. Let's set it to 100 at the start of our code. As you can see, your rover also has three servo motors. Two are located on the arm and one for the camera tower. Servo motors allow us precise control of the angular position. It's good practice to put the servers to center position block at the start of your code. That way, you know the exact position of the arm and the camera tower. Great, now we'll define the rover's movement, but we only want it to start moving when the pair button is pressed. We'll also turn the left side LED on while the rover is turning to the left, just like you would in a real car. To achieve all of that, add the following blocks inside the when pair button pressed block. Finally, we need to add a loop forever block. 
Whatever we place inside will constantly be checked and it will ensure proper code execution. Make sure to always include the scan buttons block whenever you are using the buttons. Finally, you can also add the sleep 20 milliseconds block, which determines the amount of time that will pass before the conditions are checked again. Well done, you're done with coding your first example. Click on the run button in the top right corner to upload the code to your device. When the code gets uploaded, unplug the USB-C cable from your rover and put it somewhere where there is enough space in front of it. After you do, press the pair button to see the rover start moving. If you wanted to repeat that same movement, you can simply press the pair button again. Try changing the speed variable and creating a different movement for your rover. Just make sure to be aware of its surroundings. If you want to put the stock firmware back onto your device, you can simply go here and click on the restore firmware button. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for more examples.